Welcome to naphtalitribe.com and each church study for the seven kochi india christian greetings in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ i am professor jacob abraham son of man and the son of god are two titles that jesus used to speak of himself they are not equal or similar terms their meaning is different and unrelated to each other so let us discuss these terms under different categories let us start our discussion with the term son of man We read that Jesus was called many names throughout the Bible but some of men stands apart for several reasons just as the lamb of god this name has a distinct meaning that is easily defined and connected to scripture the term son of man is used variously in scripture the hebrew term ben adam and the aramic phrase bar adam are translated as son of man The singular Hebrew expression son of man when Adam appears in the Torah over a hundred times as generally interpreted by Jews son of man denotes man can generally in contrast to deity or god god heads with a special reference to their weakness and their frailty the phrase son of man occurs 195 times in the old and new testaments it occurs 107 times in the old testament but 93 times in the book of ezekiel the use of the son of man in the gospel is unrelated to hebrew torah usages jesus is referred to as a son of man in the new testament for 88 times the phrase is used in the old testament at different occasions with a different meaning the table in the old testament highlights the weakness of human compared to god similarly in numbers 23 19 the god who does not lie or repent is contrasted with the, the son of man who does both here the term refers to humans the word simply says that god is not like us he is not a man men and women lie and god does not lie The meaning implied is different in Psalm chapter 8 verse 4 to 6. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. The Psalm is marvelous that the god who made the heavens as regard for the sons of man as soon he recognizes that god has crowned the son of man with the glory and honor and is set him over all god's works the passage clearly alludes to the original adam when it sings of how the son of man is entrusted with the dominion over creation here the son of man refers to power honor and authority Thus the term imparts to us two meanings. One, son of man as a title can highlight the frailty of mankind in contrast with God. Two, humanity's high status as the image of God and a ruler of creation. All the above observations about the Old Testament usage is true, but there is more. There are two other important things. specific uses of the term son of man in the old testament the term is used in a special way in the book of ezekiel and in another way in the book of daniel so first we shall read the meaning of the phrase in ezekiel god called the prophet ezekiel son of man 93 times god probably chose this manner of address to contrast between the human condition of ezekiel and the transcendent majesty of god In the first chapter of his book Ezekiel relates a vision he had of God's glory a scene full of wheels eyes storms fire and strange angelic creatures the prophet realized his own human frailty and limitations in the face of God's unsurpassable glory and in the first verse of the next chapter God addresses Ezekiel as son of man God is God and Ezekiel is about a son of man The phrase son of man is used in a different meaning in the prophecy of Daniel. 
Daniel 7:30 to 14 I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him then to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom that all people's nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed daniel saw a vision of one like the son of man receiving a kingdom that all people's nations and languages should serve him this is a coming into the heavenly glory and authority not a coming down to earth but a similar appearance can be expected in the end time as jesus comes again to the earth as jesus has repeatedly said he himself would come with the clouds of heaven the son of man receives dominion specifically over the kingdoms which are shown to daniel as beasts a lion a bear a leopard and a dragon the scene recalls adam's original mandate to rule over the beasts of the earth daniel's son of man is one who is fulfilling the commission to adam to rule as the image of god this is the role of jesus christ jesus christ is the last adam the faithful israelites the chief representative of the saints the perfect image of god the one who inherits the kingdoms of the world and subdues the creation that is what it means for jesus to be the son of man when jesus used the phrase son of man he was assigning daniel's prophecy to himself the teachers of the lord during jesus time on earth would have readily understood jesus meaning when he applied the title the son of man to himself jesus was proclaiming himself as the messiah and the fact that he will fulfill daniel's prophecy jesus own use of the term is often connected with the statements about his coming with the clouds of heaven so daniel serves as the most promising immediate background Jesus calls himself the son of man very often though during the time no one had trouble believing that he was a human it was his favorite self designation the term is found in all gospels it appears 29 times in matthew 14 times in mark 26 times in luke and 13 times in john gospels record jesus as speaking of himself as the son of man but there is no evidence that the church went on calling jesus the son of man Although the term was uh, used once in Acts and Toys and Revelation, the term did not pass into normal Christian usage or worship after the death and resurrection of Jesus. It is true that the application of the title Son of Man highlights the humanity of Christ. The difference is that He is the Son of Man, that is, He is the epitome of humanity. Jesus is the sinless one humanity perfected the one to finally reconcile god and uh, man and those with the ears to hear could hear daniel sever in which he was awarded a very exalted role in the history of redemption the term refers to a human but it also a title for jesus christ he was a son of man that is a human being And according to Daniel 7 he is an exalted heavenly one and Jesus means to communicate both these Jesus was the ultimate human he was God in human flesh the first instance of record in which Jesus applied to himself the expression the son of man is in his discussion with the timid Pharisee Nicodemus John 3 13 14 no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from the heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up these verses mark him as the calvary sacrifice and also identify him as a logos who served god before the days of his flesh it is a testimony of his prior existence and service in god's heaven of his invisible interaction between heaven and earth and of his knowledge of heavenly things the term son of god in the old and new testaments of the bible refers to people with a special relationship with god in the old testament angels just and pious men and kings of israel are all called sons of god the terms son of god and son of the lord found in the old testament generally do not refer to jesus or the trinity directly 
in the new testament adam and jesus christ are called the son of god by followers of jesus are called uh, sons of god in the new testament jesus is declared to be the son of god on two separate occasions by a voice speaking from heaven jesus is explicitly described as the son of god by himself and by various individuals in the new testament when applied to jesus the term refers to his role as the messiah the king chosen by god Although references to sons of God and son of God are occasionally found in Jewish literature they never refer to physical descent from God when used by the rabbis the term refers to Israel or to human beings in general and not as a reference to the Jewish um, messiah in Judaism the term messiah has a broader meaning and usage and can refer to a wide range of people not necessarily related to the Jewish eschaton in christianity the title the son of god refers to the status of jesus as the divine son of god the father the phrase son of god occurs 43 times in the new testament and it always refer to jesus It means that Jesus is God it does not mean that he was born of God nor that he was uh, the offspring of God this truth is clearly explained in John 10:32 35 John 10:30 I and my father are one the greek word that Jesus used here for one is heis it is a cardinal number such as 1 2 3 and so forth that is jesus said that he was the father and the father was himself he referred to the concept of the trinity now notice the response of the religious leaders they understood that he claimed to be god john 10:31 to 33 then the jews took up stones again to stone him jesus answered them many good works i have shown you from my master for which of those works do you stone me The Jews answered him saying for a good work we do not stone you but for blasphemy and because you being a man make you yourself god it is obvious that the Jews understood Jesus was declaring that he was god Jesus claimed that he was one with the father that is a meaning of the son of god and therefore they accused Jesus of blasphemy that means the phrase son of god means god Jesus is not god's son in the sense of a human father and a son god did not get married and never had any physical relationship with any earthly women to have a son jesus is god's son in the sense that he is god made manifest in human form during his trial before pontius pilate the jews insisted we have a law and according to that law he must die because he claimed to be the son of god why should his claim to be the son of god be considered blasphemy and be worthy of a descendants the jewish leaders understood exactly what jesus meant by the phrase son of god to be the son of god is to be of the same nature as god the son of god is of god and that is blasphemy to jewish leaders therefore they demanded jesus death in keeping with the leviticus 24:15 Jesus is the son of God the son of God is God Jesus is God made manifest and he is the son of God in that he has always existed as it the eternally begotten one who comes forth from the father forever he is the second person of the trinity with all of the divine nature fully in him and we have to understand that jesus was eternally the son of god in other words there was never a time when he was not the son of god and there has always been a father son relationship within the god catch in fact the sonship is not merely a title or role that christ assumed at some specific point in the history but that it is the essential identity of the second person of the god catch that is christ is and always has been the son of god he was a son of god before the creation he was a son of god while he was manifested on earth as a human being and he is a son of god now and will be in eternity to come this is his heavenly status as one among the trio so let us conclude that the term son of man affirms his humanity and son of god the divinity of jesus 
Jesus is eternally the son of God the son of God is not a title it does not imply that God begot a son like human beings son of God reveals the relationship with the God the father he did never give up his relationship with his father because he can never do it he was the son of man while he was on this earth born as a sacrificial lamb to atone the human sins but even during his life in this world he remained the son of god the son of god he is his eternal relationship with his father let me cut short thanks for watching and listening may god bless you all amen